Um, if you're somebody that really likes coloring, you can go ahead and do this part. I'll show you like how it relates to the answers in a second. But the coloring piece is completely optional. You don't need to do it. I'm more worried about the math. And Camilla, ma'am, just yell at me when you're ready, please. Oh, cool. Man, you're speedy. All right, ready? Cool beans. Okay, because we're going to talk about a couple of these together as a group real quick. So for number one, we have, let me zoom in here. We've got ourselves just a good old-fashioned two-step equation. We are trying to get that variable all by itself, trying to get that x all by itself. So what is sitting there that is keeping the x from being by itself? We have a 12, and we have that negative 3. Now, technically speaking, on this particular problem, you can get rid, eliminate the 12 and the negative 3 in any order that you choose. However, people typically make fewer mistakes if they get rid of this extra guy here first. So I know that's how most of you guys do it. I know a lot of your middle school teachers told you you had to do it in that order, even though that's not necessarily true. But it does, you do have a tendency to make fewer mistakes if you get rid of that extra guy first. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got to eliminate that positive 12. So I need to do the inverse of a plus 12. The negative goes with that 3 right there, okay? Got nothing to do with that 12. How am I going to get rid of that 12? I'm going to do it with a minus 12. I strongly suggest you guys use the text boxes for this homework assignment, so especially with the room that you have on the paper. I feel like it's just more manageable if you put um, the text boxes in there because you can drag them around and make it a little bit neater. It's definitely easier for me to read if you do it that way, so I know I'd appreciate it <laughs> if you put a text box in there. So I'm going to add a text box. Right underneath that 12, I'm going to put a minus 12 to make that text box smaller. Remember, you just hit this little T minus button up here so that it fits a little more nicely. So I'm going to cancel out that 12 with a minus 12 so that those 12s are going to cancel out. I'm going to try to make a halfway decent neat line. Oh, that wasn't too bad. I'm going to bring down the 3x because we haven't done anything with that yet. Remember, we can't do an x minus 12. So that minus 3x is just going to come down. So I'm going to add a little text box to represent that the negative 3x has come down. You guys know the rule, though. Math is fair. That is why math is totally the best subject because everybody gets treated the same. In real life, you know, sometimes people like don't get treated fairly, we all don't get treated equally. Math rocks because everybody gets treated the same in math. If I subtracted 12 from the left side of my equal sign, I gotta do the same thing on the right side. So I'm gonna put a little minus 12 text box right underneath the 24. Because if I subtracted 12 from one side, I have to subtract it from the other side. So now my equation is sitting at 3x is equal to, and then 24 minus 12 is going to give us 12. So I'm going to add a text box here. So the reason these are called two-step equations is because they're literally two steps, right? We got rid of the 12. We still got to get rid of that minus 3. Here is what people have been doing wrong all, I mean, for days in my small groups, homework, the whole nine yards, which is why I chose this problem to do first. I'm getting ready to do something wrong, okay? So guys, this is incorrect what I'm doing right now. A lot of people see that minus 3, and they say, okay, I'm going to cancel out that minus 3 with a plus 3 on both sides. Okay, that is not what we're going to do. That 3 sitting next to the x does not mean subtraction. If it said x minus 3, 
Yes, that would be subtraction, but that's not what we've got, is it? That is a 3 sitting next to the x, which means multiplication. So how do we cancel out multiplication? We do that with division. So I'm going to add my little box here, or my little line. Divide both sides by negative 3. Those 3's are going to cancel out, so I'm just left with my x. And then 12 divided by negative 3 means my solution is x is equal to negative 4. You're going to know that you did it right because you're going to put your solution number only, obviously. You're going to put that in the box and it's going to turn out correct because, or you know it's correct because you've got that point that showed up. If you choose to do the coloring part, I gotta admit, it is like a little satisfying. It turns out to be kind of a pretty picture. Again, not required, but if you want to do it, you can. So problem number one ended up being negative four. Negative four falls between negative 10 and zero, which means, and it's telling you to color it blue. So since we just did problem number one, that means you would color all the places where you see a one, you would color them with the blue. So again, if this is your jam, go for it. It does turn out to be a cute picture. It is not required for this assignment for you to do that. But if you want to, you certainly can. Okay, any questions about number one? I'm gonna do a couple of these for you. Make sure we're on the right track. All right, I'm gonna skip over to number six for a moment. Number six is really just like number one, but you've got an added step. So notice inside of these parentheses, you've got an x plus five. You can't combine an x and a five because they're not like terms, right? So there's nothing you can do with that x plus five right now. So that is why you are going to have to utilize the distributive property. And you gotta do that in order to get that x and that five out of the parentheses. So remember what distributive property means. You're gonna take that outside number and you're gonna multiply it by x plus five. So I'm gonna add a text box here underneath so you can see what that's gonna look like. So two times x, is 2x. Lots of people forget that you got to multiply by that second number also. So you need to do 2 times 5 as well. Don't forget to do that. So that's going to be plus 10. And the other side of the equation, which we haven't really done anything with yet, is equal to 44. So now you're going to solve it exactly like you just solved number 1. You're going to get rid of the plus 10, and then you're going to divide by 2. But that first step was a little bit different. We had to use that distributive property to get the x plus 5 out of the parentheses first. So I'm not going to finish working that one for you, but I just wanted to give you like a little, a little nudge for how to start that one. So any questions about number 6? Okay, okay. I'm going to go over to number 2. So number 2... Just like all the others, we have two things we need to cancel out. That's why it's called a two-step equation. We have this 2 right here, and we have the plus 32, right? Now, you can, again, you can cancel it out in whichever order you want, and if you do it correctly, you'll get the same answer. However, typically people make fewer mistakes if you go ahead and get rid of this extra guy first. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna get rid of that plus 32, and I'm gonna do that with a minus 32. What cancels out a plus 32? That will be a minus 32. So those are gonna cancel each other out that x over 2 is going to come down because I haven't done anything with that yet. So I'm just going to kind of add a text box, x divided by 2. 
And we all know that what we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So if I subtract 32 from the right, I have to subtract 32, or I'm sorry, if I have to subtract, I don't know my left from my right. If you got to subtract 32 from the left, you got to subtract 32 from the right hand side. So we've got x over 2 is equal to, oops, and then 34 minus 32 is 2. So we canceled out that minus 32. The last step is that we have to get rid of, this is dividing by 2, right? What's the opposite of dividing by 2? It's multiplying by 2. So I'm going to add a little text box here to show that I am multiplying this side by 2. So what's going to happen when we multiply? Those are going to cancel each other out. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other side, right? My x is by itself like I need it to be because those 2's cancel out. But I still need to multiply this side by 2 as well. And then 2 times 2 gives me my final solution, which is 4. If you want a color, you could. Question number 2, the answer is 4. And because 4 falls in between 1 and 7, that means that every place you see a 2, because it was problem number 2, you would color that orange. But again, you don't have to. Okay, questions about number 2. Sorry, I just heard my remind go off. All right, last one I want to give you guys a hint about. Is number seven. So notice that number seven is a little bit different from number two. Both of them have division. They both have that fraction bar. But notice in number 2, only x is over the 2. But then in this equation, x and the extra number are both over the 6. So that means that when you're solving number 7, you can't actually get rid of the plus 2 first, like you, would, like you did over here on number 2. You've got to get that 6 out from under both of them before you can work with them. Okay, so what's the opposite of dividing by 6? The opposite is multiplying by 6. So you're going to multiply both sides by 6. So I'm going to add a text box on this side to show that I'm multiplying by 6. And I'm going to multiply the other side to show I'm multiplying by 6 because you got to do it on both sides, right? So over here, that 6 and that 6 are going to cancel each other out. And that will leave you with the x plus 2. Over on the right-hand side, you've got 7 times 6, which is 42. So see the difference between problem number 2 and problem number 7? They both had division, but the difference is you can't get rid of this extra guy first in number 7 because that extra guy is sitting on top of the 6 along with the x. So now you've just got a basic one-step equation, which I have a feeling you guys can take that from here. All right, so any questions on the homework? So you've already got a good, what, like almost a half of it done or at least a really good start on half of it. So any questions about the homework, and then I'm gonna talk to my 1030 folks about what it is that I need from you guys. It's really not much. It's a really easy fix on your check for understanding.